Praise God. I want to preach a brief message again today. Hopefully it will be brief indeed. <laughs> Psalm 34 verse 7. My voice is better now. It was terrible before service. And I look a little more... <laughs> I, look, I look stronger now. That first service, I look like somebody about to fall asleep any moment from... My son said, you are looking. He said, you, why don't you have sleep? <laughs> Hallelujah. The angel of the Lord encamped around them that fear him. And those what? I want to talk about the deliverance ministry of angels. They bring message. They deliver. And I want to focus on, just check a few examples in the Bible. When we say God will make a way. He may, one of the ways through which God makes a way is to send an angel ahead of you. And I want to tell you about what to also be careful of because they can block ways also. This way it's important that you must be in alignment with God's plan and purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Daniel 6, 22. Can I have your seat? So let me not keep on standing for you. Daniel 6, verse 22. You know, when Daniel was put in the den of land, Daniel said this. I, at the end of the day, I will say what you have to do. Which is very simple. Last week I spoke about the word to speak. I'm talking a bit about prayer also. But most important, I'm talking about being um, in line with God's will for your life. God's purpose. A uh, person can actually move away from God's plan and open up yourself to destruction. And that has happened to many Christians. The lady you call Naomi in the Bible, because there was a bit of famine in Bethlehem, her husband and husband decided to go to another country. The husband died, the first born, the second born died. Because you are a believer, the Lord does not permit you to move any hour without praying. Commit your ways to the Lord's hand. There is nothing wrong with traveling to anywhere in the world. But pray first. It's important. You, you cannot follow multitude. Oh, this is what's written and then jump there. You have a covenant with you are a child of God. Your father must be involved. When you sense peace in your heart to go somewhere, go there. But not before. I get what I'm saying. When Daniel was thrown to the den of lion, and the king said, Has your God been able to? Daniel said, My God has sent his angel. Remember, I told you that there are classes of angel. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth. So that they have not hurt me. So on the outside, people saw that lions refused to eat Daniel. But Daniel gave an explanation. Whether he saw the angel or not, we don't know. But Daniel was so certain that before he landed in the den of the lion, God sent his angel to shut their mouth. That's why they can't hurt me. Be praying under your bread as I share this message, hopefully briefly. There are lions in this world whose mouth must be shut. There are lions, lion likes of, uh, people. At a point in Daniel's life, he was fair to the lion. But thank God, he said, God has sent his angel. We don't pray to angels, we'll pray to God, but like Jesus taught us. You can ask God to send angels. And many of you will need to say that right now before the end of the service. I spoke about reinforcement last week that you might need more angels to get involved, especially when the spiritual activities around you are heightened. Your children are under threat. You might need to ask God for more angels than the ones working with you. Jesus showed us and Elijah showed us. Elisha. Now again, Daniel was aware. In Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, I think when they go down to verse 22 or so, verse 22. Verse 22. 
But when the officers came, go, let's start from 20. Something happened. Go stand from 19. <laughs> you know, as they were preaching, they were locked up in prison. I am just showing you from the Bible how early people were conscious of angelic ministry. Let's start from 18. When, when it looks like great things are happening in your life, you don't expect Satan to fold his arm and just do nothing. As they began to preach and the church was expanding, the Bible says, the, let's start from 17, sorry. I want to see who. Then the high priest rose up and all that were with him with a set of Sadducees and were filled with indignation. And I still told them first time that this still happened in the city. By day one, one popular reporter showed up, entered the kingdom arrogantly and began to take pictures and forwarded it to the governor, to the deputy, put it on Twitter. They turned the kingdom to church and was talking. Some of my people, I said, leave him. Don't, don't talk with him. Just leave him. It came day two also. But his report didn't stop anything. By the following morning, they had reports all over Twitter and then in government house that uh, but they were calling my mother said, who did this? What happened? But see, it didn't lead to anything. That's why I said, when you step out, you will understand. He will not do that about political rally. He will not do that about any other thing. It is when it is church and you might be shocked. It might not be a non-Christian. But that's not my, my point today. It's, it, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> the high priest rose up. <laughs> They were filled with indignation. And that was what the guy showed. In the name of, wow, this is not the period. And then, and by the following morning, it was all over top offices. But he said, none of them answered him. They got the message. They saw it on their phones. They forwarded it to the management of the stadium, but nobody did anything about what he said. They came back the day two again, the following day. And one of the staff there just said that, but this guy has never shown up with all the rallies where they will sit there and drive every stop on the stadium. One of the staff was saying, he said, we are the ones who put, said, no, this guy has never. When it is short, suddenly they re- And as some Christian joined them, they want to talk. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> next verse 18. <laughs> and lay hands on the apostles and put them in common prison. There are common prisons. At times, believers go to jail. There will be jail-like situation from time to time. Now, we don't know the names of this apostle, but in chapter 12, Peter was arrested also and put in prison. You remember? Who appeared to Peter in the night? So now, the lay hands and put them in prison, verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night, who is this angel of the Lord? Remember, say individuals have angels. Then there are angels in charge of family, probably every congregation. There is the angel of household of David. There is the angel of redeem. All of you have your guiding angel. When you come together under any umbrella, there is an angel in charge of that umbrella also. There must have been a part. There must be a particular angel in charge of Nigeria, and there is a demonic spirit also, the prince of Nigeria. Like the prince of Persia. That must be the class of wicked spirits. And that's where events are manipulated. Every office you are, there are angels assigned and there are demons assigned. And it depends on who the owner of the office is. Will determine who is really in charge. But when you are there, that's why you have to intercede. Because that is the only way you can gain control. Working under somebody with something that does not belong to you. Yet the decision will affect you. You better be a person of prayer. I get what I'm saying. But that's the only way you get God involved. And you give angels access. Because in the spirit, boundaries are respected. When a man says, I'm an occultic, I don't want God. When he builds it out, demons will supervise the house. And they can torment a saint that lives there who is ignorant of his right in Christ. Yes, there can be from his courage. So things, people pack into houses. See, this is why third service I'm talking about. Little, you, you can't live without letting the Spirit of God guide you. If God opens your eyes, the first thing you will know 
is that you cannot live any hour as a Christian. I've been saying that to people. I love this house. I just just parking. I love this car. No. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He must order your steps. Satan will take full advantage of anything you do outside God's plan for your life. He will take full advantage. The higher you rise in ministry, ask all men of God. Don't see what's still saying this. The more you ask God, where do you want me to go to? Travel to a place is not sending you. Why, yeah, yeah. God will protect your life, depending on. But they do. That's why you will know that these things are real. All the hatred he has for you, he will utilize them very quickly when you're outside God's will. I dare not go to where God is not saying. With all this, how I pray for people speak against demons, I will not. I know enough to know that you don't play it. Let, Bible says, let Satan take advantage of us. So there's a way you can give him an advantage, give up upper hand by yourself. And believe me, certainly, if there's anybody, if there's any opportunity, Satan is one. You give him up upper hand, ask David. The series of events that will follow before God saves you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Once you give him a little hole like this, he takes full advantage of it. And it goes all the way. Um, hallelujah. No matter any venue they show me, I come back to office and start praying that, Lord, is that where you want us to? Because I understand the wickedness of Satan. Our safety. Because your angel will just be watching once you are in the place of disobedience. And I'll show you one fellow in the Bible right now, or one or two. You know, when I said they we thought about bashing, but there is something bigger than that, that I will show you. I get to what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Angels, so, <laughs> they were locked in prison and the angel opened the door. It's a if opening prison door is child's play to an angel. He said, go and continue preaching. And the Bible says, when the officials got there, they said the men were locked in. They met the prison locked, but they found nobody inside. When it got to Acts chapter 12, Peter was lying down bound. I don't know as I speak. Somebody here and somebody watching, you will experience deliverance by the ministry of an angel today. Peter was sleeping. The angel tapped Peter. I said, rise. The person said, Peter thought it was a dream. Let's start from when he appeared, life filled the prison. That must be an angel of a great authority. The angel of the Lord. That's the name they've been calling this particular angel. Who appeared to Moses in the burning bush? All angels in the Bible refuse worship except the one that is called the angel of the Lord. When the bush was burning, he told Moses to remove your shoe. And Moses bowed. And the angel did not say, don't bow. But no other angel was able to remove that shoe except this angel of the Lord. It was one that appeared to Joshua also in Joshua chapter 5. As they were about to enter Jericho, he was the one that led this call. He said, I am the commander of the Lord's army. Some have said it was the Holy Spirit. The guy that wrote Angel of Simon said that the guy appeared to my call. He says, Kiron, the Kiron, or Siron, or something like that. I don't know. I don't go into debates. But I stay with what the Bible says. That Joshua saw a fellow standing. And Joshua was a bold man. He was not intimidated. And he said, excuse me, are you for us or for our adversary? And the guy said, none of the above. He said, I am the captain of the Lord's guard. You are about to enter the most fortified city in the world, but we make it cheap for you. Why? My guys are there. You can't see them. I'm the only one you can see. Yes. Sometimes, if God opens you, you'll see one. But for everyone, you see there are others. And at times, seeing them is not important. Them doing their duty is what is important. So don't say, Lord, let me see an angel. You might see a demon. Somebody say, ah, it's true, it's true. <laughs> because you can't go outside. The Bible didn't tell us to pray to see an angel. Yes, if one appears, you'll fight. But I tell you the truth. If you see a real angel, you will shiver. It's not a very pleasant time. How many people have seen an angel here before? Not uh, in your dream or, <laughs> or you saw something like here. Yes, like, you, you've seen an angel before, a real angel. You've seen one before, sir? Okay, who else has seen one angel before? Let me see your hand. Ah, 
God has opened people's eyes there. <laughs> there is a brother at the back. You've seen one before. Let me stand. Let me see you. Okay, sister there. Oh, my, it, uh, one of our fathers also. You've seen one before, sir? Wow. Thank you. How was the experience? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Except they appear like normal people. That one won't scare you. But if they come in the weight of their glory, men, when they came to talk to Pastor Buck, that wrote just as he was sleeping, one of them just picking like a, like pick an object and sat him on the bed. He said he couldn't even free himself from the guy. And he saw one, and he said the barry tone of the voice. And interestingly, his wife was sleeping and she never woke up. They were talking, the beauty was vibrating, and she did with that realm of the spirit for you. It's the same technology the Lord will use at rapture. That two will be on the bed, one will be taken and one will be left. The Lord knows how to measure it. Yes. As you are seated now, if Jesus appears to you now, in this church now, you will think everybody is seeing him, but only you will see him. It is the power of the Spirit. He will start and be talking on top of his voice, yet your neighbor is not hearing anything. If you hear God's audible voice, only you will hear it, other people around will not hear it. But that voice will almost kill you, yet others are not hearing anything. Because in the physical realm, you think you are so close. In the spirit realm, you are so far apart. It will shock you. This is Tolu, and you are sitting beside Kibrakeni, uh, uh, beside him. As close as you are, there can be 10 million angels between you. It cannot be explained in physical language, but that's the truth. I get what I'm saying. And as you move around the world, there are people marked with the mark of Christ and there are people not marked. And God knows. And spirits, they know the difference. Only that spirit don't play, they don't play fear. So even when there's people that are marked with the mark of they still try to attack except to declare that who you are. They always fear only when they hear it from you. You remember I said that in my first service. I've said that many times. That something which does not mean spirit will obey it. They obey when you put it in your mouth. Now they know that your belief is for you. That's when they go. Jesus conquered the devil. But after conquering the devil, Peter looked back and he said, resist the devil and he will flee. Jesus has conquered him. He's supposed to be on the floor. But the Bible says that, that Jesus has conquered does not mean he will not attempt you. He will respect you when you resist him. Then he will receive a lesson that this one knows that I've been conquered. But the enemy knows that many don't know. So he's still plaguing them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is somebody with me? Yes, sir. So, Peter woke up. The angel didn't talk about it. The chain just fell off by itself. And they got to the first door. It opened. The second door. You know, I see them this week walking with somebody and great and mighty doors will open. Because now you are not journeying alone. The Bible says when they were past the first and the second gate, they came to the iron gate that led to the city. It opened to them of its own accord. There is a spiritual technology. That they don't use keys. <laughs> it's called divine presence. Gate leading to the city. Why am I saying this? It looks like a prophetic service this morning. So you are here, you have been, God has helped you to cross the first gate, second gate. But you are here to cross the gate that leads to the city. What this means to a business person is that that is at that point that the city knows what to do. The city recognizes you. Your authority is in the city. Your product, your whatever you do, the city signature is on it. Any gate to her. Next gate opens by the Spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ. And for many people, all, all people listening to me and watching, in the name of Jesus, May you step into the city season where the city gates, iron gate, the Bible calls them, but they crumble before you and you have full access in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ministry of angels. And you can go on and go and on like that in the Bible. But I want to show you the other side of it. So if you are on page with God, he sends them ahead of you. But pray about it. Pray about them. 
pray that you can actually ask the Lord to send his angel ahead of you. You can make a special request intentionally. You can make a request deliberate and ask God to send an angel. Don't just leave. Ask for them. Jesus said that I could have asked for 12 legions. But because I'm supposed to die, that's about you are not supposed to die. So you should ask. In other words, Jesus was saying that if not that I plan to go to the cross, I see this host, I would have asked for an angel to finish all of you. He said, but this is why I'm here to die. Or are you here to die also? If you are not here to die, you are better ask for angels. Ask God to reinforce. Send more. And you will see more job getting done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I will just show you two people. You know a man called Balaam. In Numbers 22. Balaam. Ah, I think we start from verse 22 also. Numbers 22, 22. 22. You know, when this people came to his house, God said, don't go. Can I warn somebody here? Those of you that love things that God does not love. <laughs> In Exodus 33, 32, 33, and 34. Let me know. The Lord started telling them, the same angel that was leading them, opening one nation after the other to them. God told them that if you provoke him, he will deal decisively with you. That's what God told them. He said, we're not part of your trust. He said, my, my name is in him. About three times, God warned them like that. That was why when God said to Moses, that, I'm not going with you. My angel will. Moses said, saying, that, Lord, mm -mm, don't let an angel. Angels are not merciful. You are. So Moses knew what he was saying. He said, Lord, I know you are massive. You are the Almighty. You are a father. Angels are not fathers. <laughs> so Moses said, don't let him. If any mistake, this guy will deal with us. And I'll show you an example of it. Now, here, Balaam was told. God said, don't go. The officials came. And the Bible said, God came. And I said, who are those guys? When God is asking you a question, he's asking. You no, know, somebody said, God is not. When God is asking you a question, he's not looking for an answer. He's calling your attention to something. He said, Balaam, who are these guys that came to your house? Ah, he said, the uh, officials of uh, the king of Balak, uh, king Balak. He said, what do they want? He said, they want me to curse Israel. God said that, don't curse them, they are blessed. I want to say this to everybody. See, this is why in the night, when we came back yesterday, then, uh, you know, uh, the group left very early, but I left a bit late. I left as apostle, I'm just me and him drove together to Lagos so that we could talk in the car. And then, after a while, as the choir was wrapping up, I came here to pray. There was no like everywhere, everywhere was dark. The Lord said something to me, I trembled. As if he was pointing to me that this is a warning. And this is why many people say, don't rise. I'm going to give a very, very powerful warning here and those who are watching me. Listen to me very well. In dealing with angels, there is something you must be careful of. Angels don't take kindly to people who violate authority, spiritual authority. And it extends to other authorities. Wherever you walk, wherever you are, to parent, please be lawyer. It's true. It just said that to my spirit as a strong warning last night when I was praying. Never go against an authority instituted by God. The Lord said to Balaam, don't cause them they are blessed. I will take it a little step further. Never fight a person that God is blessing. It's not limited. These people I'm talking about, they're only limited to Christians, so um, let me say it in a way that you can understand. In this southwest, the cause of Ebola logo, just say this one, there's glory on him. It is true that some people, the hand of God is just special on them, not only Christians. Number one, if you fight them, you won't stop them from getting to where they are going, but you will destroy yourself in the process. It is true. If in the choir God is raising somebody and you are the one fighting it, 
and I've seen too many like that. People have died and needless, I mean, it's painful. Once you see the favor and the hand of God upon somebody, it is none of your, don't be the one trying to cut them into size and check the end of critics on social media. Ten years they can get by with it. People do always, how it always ends. You get to ask them a question, does it matter, does it concern you? So what does it concern does not concern you. You understand? You have enough things to face in your life. Some people are giving names on earth. Whether you like it or not, they will be popular, their names will ring bell. Please, always, please, avoid talking about people. Like, just leave them. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to like them. You don't have to, but nothing will happen to, nothing will happen to you if you don't cross their paths. If you try to stop them, you'll get into trouble. Balaam was carrying a sword and oil, but God said, I see, the people they asked him to come and cause, they are blessed. Leave the matter alone. He said, okay. You know, the devil doesn't give up on time. Then the prince, the king, king, king Balak said, really, the officials came back. He said, what well, I said, Balak said, he should not come. He said, why? He said, God, he's God said, he should, not, he should not cost them. The guy doubled the money. Maybe when time's 10. They asked him to do a walk. Tell him, I'm, I'm busy, I can't do it. So, okay, from 5 million to 50 million. All of a sudden, he said, I think I can. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody said to one pastor one day, he said he was very busy praying. I'm very busy. Somebody called us. Are you free? Can I see you today? He said, no, I'm not today. Very busy. I said, I won't be available. And I said, I was just thinking of bringing a million dollars to your house. Ah, so what did I say, no? <laughs> that I will be available only to receive. <laughs> if you promise yourself that you're not going to go out on a particular day, I want to spend time with your family, don't worry about it, I want to switch off your phone. And somebody says, Come to her, I said, Should look up. I said, I'm actually coming with uh, uh, 250 million naira for you. What will be your answer? How many of you will still say, Don't come? They say, I don't care. Today is today. Don't come. I'm busy. Or you will adjust your schedule. <laughs> Say, don't mind me. Come. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. The Lord said, don't. They doubled the amount. Eventually, show me that scripture. Balaam decided to go. And in verse 22, the Bible said, God was angry that he left. And who did God send? I'm just showing you the dual, the how angels can function this way for protection and function this way for judgment. Verse 22, please. Thank you. And God's anger was kindled because he went, and the angel of the Lord again stood in the way for an adversary against him. Can these guys, do they work against people as much as they work for people? Yes. I showed you in prayer, my Bible said, do not say for an angel that it was an error lest it will destroy the works of your hand. And the angel stood on the way. He was going to kill him, but his donkey saved him. And he beat the donkey over and over again. And donkey said, ah. next verse. Verse 23. Please be fast, I want to end. The ass saw the angel stand in the way with a sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned us out of the way and went to the field. And balance smote the ass to turn and he was beating the innocent animal. Not that the animal was trying to save his life. Sometimes we'll fight things that are trying to save you. You know, your car can break down 30 minutes to an accident. And you kick the car. And the car is trying to say that, Madam, ah, see, you know, like <laughs> But you don't know. Or one police just stop you and ask for a seat to your wristwatch. After you have shown him everything, he just delay you there. You don't know. <laughs> That's why we say, count it all joy. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You remember the plane that crashed in Nigeria one time of some gen- some young soldiers who just finished from that the, somebody thought they were a threat to him and crash all of them. The only guy that said that survived, he came down from the plane for a senior officer. 
Yes. It was inside. Then somebody arrived and they said that no, no space again. And the next day might be the following day. And he just said, really, that, that guy trained man. He came down. That place we enter. He did not know that he came from death to life. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Eventually, let me end this whole story. The ass kept seeing the angel. Then God opened him out of the ass. Show me, and he said that, can't you see? Then the angel told Balaam, honestly speaking, if not for your animal, I would have killed you. You are God's prophet. We respect you, but you are moving against God's will. You will die. But I want to read, end with 4 Samuel 24. And I'll end there. A man after God's heart. You know, at times, some losses and some setbacks are not from Satan, no. Satan, you can bind. God, you cannot bind. I don't know why this part is part of this message. To one, stay away from things that does things that don't glorify God. I am asking you as a church. The Lord didn't point to anybody, but I didn't mention any issue. But whatever comes to your mind that you know, don't give Satan an opportunity to enter into your game and start distorting things. Second Samuel twenty-four. Thank you. Is somebody with me? Is somebody blessed? Remember, doors are opening this week. The anger of the Lord said, go number. David decided to number them contrary to God's plan. Go down to, I don't know which verse now, where the angel spread the sword over Jerusalem. Let's start from verse 10. or no, start from verse 22. Verse 22. Start from 21. Or 20. Uh, start from 14. David spoke to the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people. These were God's people. And David said, I have sinned. I have done wickedly. But this sheep, what have they done? It's good to have a pastor like David. He was one that sinned. The people were the one point. Nobody died in his own house. But David said, Lord, ah, uh-uh. ah. I was the one that sinned. Why, why killing all these people? If anybody should die, it should be me. <laughs> I pray the let your hand be against me and against my father's house. When you begin to hear of God having extra love for David, this is the reason. A selfless person. A some members of church die, say, Lord, no, let my family die. Let these people be okay. Most leaders will pray the opposite, especially African leaders. But David said, no. Imagine a man praying that, Lord, let them stop dying outside. Let us stop dying in my own family. So because the, I, was, I was the problem. Now, next verse. Oh. And God came that day to David and said, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord. I will talk about this another day. If you ever see a pattern that is destructive or some like negative pattern coming around. There's something you can do. And all has to be raised quickly. That's why I'll be sharing about the blood. But there might be a step also you have to take on the ground of the blood. Remember, there are principles of God. God did not tell God anything. Here, at least. I don't know what that point. God, this story says, God just told David, when they saw the sword passing, God just said, come. If it is God, there's something you can do. Go and erect an altar. This show will stop right now. They saw the angel there. He said, stop him there. There's a sacrifice that can stop destruction. So, next verse. David did according to the word of God. Went up as the Lord commanded. Next verse. I ran not look and saw the king and the servant coming. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. David, he refused to get it for free. Next verse. And I went there. He built an altar. So the Lord was entreated for the land. And the plague was stayed from Israel. Physically, the people were seeing plagues. Like Ebola. Everybody was just dying. 
But the few ones that God opened there, they saw that it was not plague. There was an angel with a sword. Every plague that has plagued humanity, maybe the angel called Abadion, Apollyon, is behind it. Many destructions. In the spirit, it's a sword. In the physical, it becomes a plague. Especially anything that is killing huge number of people is being controlled somewhere. Hallelujah. But I just said to say that theologians have argued about that. Is this an angel of the Lord? The one that killed in Egypt was called angel of the Lord, was also called angel of destruction. Does he have some angels that destroy? We will not answer that today. But one thing is certain. In all cases, they are both called angels. Angels. So when people veer up the right paths, there can be a problem. Those who are supposed to defend them at least can just stay their hand and then you can be open and be exposed. Hallelujah. Amen. Is somebody with me? Yes, sir. But pay attention to the first one. Deliverance. So many people will be lifted this, this week. Amen. So many doors will open. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If there's anybody in any kind of chain, by the ministry of an angel, the chain will fall off right now. Amen. Let's rise. Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to employ you now to give your heart to Christ and by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously, he has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now, and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.